the Cochetid people of Eastern Africa, Dink, Somali, Oromo, Afar, Beja, stand out from the crowd with their unique looks. So, what's a typical Cochetid look? A narrow face, slender narrow to medium noses, a spectrum of skin tones from dark to light, straight to curly hair with varying textures, tall in physics, almond-shaped eyes, high cheekbones, thick lips, and a long neck. They are undeniably striking. So, how did they evolve to look like this? Ever notice how Cushitic people often stand head and shoulders above the rest? Their tall stature is a mix of genetic predisposition and environmental factors. In their arid homelands, Imtola helps with them regulation, making it easier to stay cool. Imagine living in the sweltering heat of the Horn of Africa. You would need a built-in cooling system, right? That's precisely what evolution gave the Cushitic people. Their tall, lean bodies and elongated limbs are perfect for dissipating heat. Think of them as nature's version of an air conditioner. This is explained by Allen's rule, which suggests that animals, including humans, in hot climates tend to have longer limbs to help cool down. Cushitic people often have narrower faces and higher nasal bridges. These features are not just random. Studies in the genre of genetics and genomics reveal specific mutations affecting hair structure more prevalent among Cushitic populations. <laughs> Please take a moment to like this video, and if you've done that, thank you! Now let's continue. The Cushitic people have a rich history of pastoralism leading to frequent migrations and interactions with various groups. This nomadic lifestyle facilitated genetic exchange with neighboring populations including non-African groups, contributing to their unique genetic makeup. Certain Cushite groups have experienced periods of relative resolution, amplifying specific genetic traits. This genetic drift has preserved unique markers that contribute to their distinct physical characteristics. Population genetics studies highlight how isolation can be lead to significant phenotypic differences over time. For example, the Somali people who often avoid intermarriage have retained distinct features that set them apart. But here is a twist. It is more likely that Eurasians descend from these ancient Cushitic ancestors rather than the other way around. The ignorant would say that people of the Horn got their diversity from mixing with some non-African people. Yet, the people of the Horn of Africa are older genetically than those with whom they are said to have mixed with. <laughs> based upon their most ancient drawings and carvings, have looked the way they do to bay before known interactions with the people outside of Africa. Their archaeology predates others, therefore, it is silly to assume anything other than they influenced the Arab looks more likely than vice versa. <laughs> The alay found in Middle Eastern people to digest sugars as an adult is pretty absent in horn populations at 1.6%. Cushitic fetus have remained remarkably consistent over millennia, highlighting the pure lineage. What is dubbed as the West Eurasian component in horn Africans is from an ancient population that likely was indifferent from horn Africans of today. <laughs> Thank you.
And the If Kushaitui indeed a mixture of Black and say a non African group, Middle Eastern group, would they not then look like the mixed heritage Swahili peoples that live just south of them? Yet they do not. Another similar piece of evidence are the neighboring Christian idiosematic groups who are themselves the descendants of Amerigian population mixing with indigenous Cushitic population. These Habisha persons, for the most part, are easily distinct from the Cushites. Another good piece of evidence is the appearance of early European hunter-gatherers, most notably the Labrana specimen, who also had Caucasian features with a dark skin. The appearances of these early Europeans is very similar to that of one of Africans and supports the idea that the phenotype of Kushites as the original phenotype of mankind, alongside the phenotype typical of the Khoisan peoples, wherein it diversified into the range of colors and looks of humanity. Thank you so much for watching. Until next time, goodbye.